I just received the Nest thermostat, third generation. For anybody who's interested in getting one, I'm gonna show how to install it and some of the features. Tony Fidel is the founder of Nest. He used to work for Apple, and you can see some of the same sensibility in the design, both in the way that it uh, looks and the way that it functions. So it comes very nicely packaged. instructions in here and it actually comes with uh, a tool a screwdriver uh, that's both Phillips and flathead screwdriver which has all the standard connections for most heating and cooling systems and it, screw. And it also has a wall plate it can be mounted directly onto the wall or you can use a wall plate in case you need to cover any holes or anything in the wall. And also if you have a, an actual uh, electric box, uh, you can m use this mount to mount that and it comes with screws for that. So you have pretty much everything you need for 90% of the installations, uh, you know, standard installations. Uh, if it's fairly modern equipment, then uh, it'll work right out of the box with no additional equipment. So the first thing you need to do is turn off the power to the heating and air conditioning system. The instructions suggest that you use the provided stickers to label your wires so that it's easy to figure out which wires go where. But you can also take a picture and use that as a guide. So I removed the old thermostat. It's just a uh, standard Honeywell programmable thermostat. It has no Wi-Fi or it doesn't have the features that the Nest has, like the ability to control it through uh, an app or through the website. It doesn't program the schedule automatically. It has to be done manually. Now I'm going to hook up the wall plate and the base for the Nest, which connects directly to the wires. There's a really nice feature included, the level uh, that's built in. Everything's nice and level, so I'm just going to hook up the wires. Depending on the configuration of your air conditioning or heating unit, it'll vary slightly, but there's a, a, an interactive tool you can go through to make sure that everything is compatible. All right, so I got all the wiring hooked up, and they uh, suggest you push, push the wires back so that it's flush. Let's see the back here. It's got a micro USB that's uh, mainly for charging. Uh, apparently there's a small amount of memory probably for the firmware updates that you can access but that's basically it and just plugs right in and you just press it and it clicks and that's pretty much it it's on and there's a little protective covering here I'll just take off we'll just give it a minute and I have the system powered down but you can see it's turning on anyway that's because there's a built-in battery uh, this backup battery so that it stores all the settings and so it'll operate without electricity for some time until the battery dies and it takes about you know 30 seconds to start up and it cycles through all the the main menu options and then uh, the setup process which I'll just walk through and you can see it's very simple so I happen to be here in the US so I do want English and then we go to the internet connection, connect, and then uh, it'll just find whatever uh, connections are available. So it's connecting. And let's see, and then we continue. And uh, in this case, there's a, an update to download. So one of the nice things about uh, connected devices like this is that firmware updates can fix problems or add new features. It takes a few minutes to go through the entire updating process. And it, after it's done, it'll restart. So it's basically uh, a small computer that runs Linux, you know, a, probably a customized version of Linux. All right, so then the, you continue after the software's um, updated and you put in your zip code which it already apparently knows type of home where it's located and then what kind of uh, system you have 
homeowner or a pro, there's a pro installation option. It'll confirm the wiring and the equipment that's detected. And so in, in, in my case, it's a heating and cooling system with a fan. Uh, the heating is gas, forced air, temperature. Uh, it should begin cooling. It's actually kind of warm since I've had this off for a while. Now you can set a range. So when it detects that you're away from home, you can um, determine the maximum and minimum uh, ranges of temperatures that you want to allow. I'm just going to leave it on the default. So I got the power back on, so I'm going to run the test. Let's test uh, cooling. And there it is, it's coming on. It'll take a few minutes to go through each test because um, the compressor doesn't want to recycle too quickly. Uh, so it takes a few minutes for it to go through the different steps. And so the, the air conditioning compressor will turn off and then the fan will run just to kind of get the humidity out of the system. And, um, and then the heater the gas will heat up and then the fan will turn on. So it takes a few minutes to go through all the tests, uh, but everything seems to be working properly. So the heater is working. Okay. And I know the fan's working because it was working for the heater and the uh, air conditioning. So I'm just gonna skip that step. on here just provide some information about how it automatically sets things so um, I'm going to it's pretty hot in here right now I'm going to set it to uh, 77 so we can make sure everything's working um, there's some some neat uh, options so if you go to the menu it'll show the outside temperature you know based on uh, data based on your zip code so uh, it's showing, uh, let's see, uh, oh, you can indicate whether you're home or away. So if you're going on vacation, you can do that. Um, let's see, uh, it indicates when the last time the software was updated. Uh, and it has various settings. You can lock the settings. So if you have kids or um, you know people you don't want changing the settings, those can be locked. Reminders. Uh, there's um, you can have it set to remind you to change the air filter. Mine was changed in August, so I'm going to indicate that. And it'll based on the running time uh, of the fan, it will determine uh, whether or not the filter needs to be changed. So that's a handy feature. Um, you can adjust the brightness of the screen. I'm just going to set it to automatic. There's different options for the display. Uh, there's wake and farsight. Um, and what, what those do, it says, do you want to awake when you press or on approach? Because it'll detect motion, you know, based on infrared sensors. Um, and so I like it to be on approach rather than having to press it. Uh, it'll just show the target temperature or an analog clock or a digital clock or, or none. And I kind of like the uh, the analog clock. It's pretty cool. And uh, and then you can there's an audible clicking sound that you can turn on off and on. You can um, have it display in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, you can if you have more than one thermostat so in a larger home, uh, that that's pretty common. Then you can indicate where they're located so that you can when you're looking at data you can tell which thermostat the data is for. Um, you can set up an account online and that allows you to control it from the internet or from the app on Android and iPhone. Uh, your location can be adjusted and uh, the equipment, in case you add equipment, you could uh, change th that, that setting would end up being changed. There's some settings for uh, professional installation, uh, which I'm not going to go look at right now. There's some technical info. Uh, it tells you so for debugging and stuff, current temperature, target temperature, relative humidity. The humidity sensor is kind of nice because, uh, as you know, when it's very humid, it feels hotter than it really is. 
Um, so when you run the air conditioning, it tends to lower the relative humidity and makes it feel more comfortable. Um, there is um, uh, the, the battery voltage to make sure that it's charging properly, the um, voltage for the wiring to make sure that that's all correct, and also um, information about Wi-Fi. I'm just going to go back to the main screen and I'm gonna leave it. Once you have an account, it'll show all your Nest devices. Um, so I, I have only the thermostat here and you can see uh, the display, what it shows it looks just like the front of the thermostat itself and you can uh, t turn the temperature up or down. Um, it shows conveniently the outside temperature so uh, you know if your temperature inside is higher than outside then you should just open some windows. Uh, it also shows the relative humidity on the inside and um, there you can also select whether you're home or away. The thermostat will go into electricity saving mode if you're if you click if you indicate that you're away it will automatically detect whether there's somebody away for an extended period of time if there's no movement um, then it will begin to operate as if you're away uh, automatically the mobile app is almost identical it looks the same and, and it functions the same uh, you can't control all of the settings uh, on the thermostat. Some of them you have to do at the device itself, but others you can change using the app. That's basically it. I, I think it's a, a great device. It is kind of expensive. It's about $250, definitely more than the typical thermostat. What it adds and features, the ability to control it remotely, features that it uses to reduce energy usage is very handy. It also sends you a monthly report on your electricity usage. It autom automatically learns uh, when you change a setting, say at night before you go to bed, if you raise it or lower it, whatever you do, it will repeat, repeat that. It's uh, well designed and a pretty good device. So if you're considering one, you know, I do recommend it. Thanks for watching. If you like these kinds of videos, let me know in the comments and I'll do more. Thanks a lot.